Let me thank our, our three witnesses. I think it's very appropriate that our first hearing in this Congress is in regards to the future of low carbon transportation fuels. Uh, clearly, I was with Senator Merkley, we've been engaged in some of the international meetings on the climate crisis, and uh, we have a crisis, so we need to do everything we possibly can in every aspect. And, uh, the uh, low carbon emission fuels is clearly part of that. I am pleased that under the bipartisan infrastructure bill that Maryland has been able to take advantage of many of the new opportunities under the low or no emissions fuel programs. We have received three major grants in our state, 15 million to Montgomery County, Maryland, for new hydrogen production sites and acquiring 13 hydrogen fuel cell electric buses. In Prince George's County, $25 million for a 70 zero emission electric buses. Uh, in Anne Arundel County, $1.9 million for four diesel electric hybrid buses. I say that because there's three different technologies, but all of them are adding to our commitment to reduce our carbon footprint. And then under the Clean School Bus Program, Baltimore City is receiving $9.4 million uh, for uh, 25 electric school buses. So uh, we're taking advantage of these opportunities. I, I, I know, uh, Mr. Graff, you talked a little bit about the hydrogen uh, issues. Uh, it's new technologies, uh, uh, but it has limits. So where, where do you see the future of, of hydrogen as a source for transportation energy? Senator, thanks for the question. Uh, hydrogen itself uh, is a very versatile molecule. Um, if we are going to achieve our climate objectives, if the energy transition is going to occur, it will not happen without hydrogen. The estimate is that hydrogen itself, long term by 2050, will likely account for roughly 20% of the world's energy supply. And that versatility allows us to use hydrogen produced in a variety of different pathways to decarbonize energy-intensive industry and also to decarbonize the transportation sector. The utilize of that utilization of that hydrogen, we've talked a little bit about personal vehicles, but as you grow the vehicle, as you look at commercial vehicles, as you look at the Class A tractors that are on the highways, if in fact we want to get to a zero emission vehicle, in that case we are in a place where we can utilize hydrogen paired with a fuel cell maintain the same utility you have today, the same drivability, the same refueling time, uh, the same use regardless of temperature, and you will be able to utilize because of the small footprint and weight of the fuel cell along with the amount of hydrogen necessarily to go ahead and carry on board to power that, you will be able to maintain the payload you have today. So it has the capability in almost every use in the transportation sector to see that evolve. The key is to build out the infrastructure. The key is to build the need for the vehicles and see this grow and evolve as we have for other sectors. So we took a, a giant step in that direction under the uh, Inflation Reduction Act providing certain incentives. What more needs to be done? So the Inflation Reduction Act clearly provides the capability to produce hydrogen under a variety of pathways, whether you're utilizing renewable power or utilizing natural gas with carbon capture to produce the hydrogen at a lower cost and have the benefit of the low carbon renewable hydrogen. The key now, given the fact that the transportation sector is one of the most difficult to decarbonize, is to go ahead and further incentivize the use to build out the vehicles and fully utilize those. As a matter of fact, I was with one of our drivers uh, just Thursday uh, utilizing one of the Class A tractors we're currently using to deliver goods in the state of California between our industrial sites, which utilizes hydrogen and a hydrogen fuel cell to power it. So we just need to build the scale to get there. Thank you. Mr. Spear, I want to get you engaged here on the heavy trucks, uh, heavy-duty trucks. Uh, I, I recognize that we have infrastructure challenges that are very important to the, uh, the, to the, uh, the, the trucker and trucking industry. And I recognize we have supply chain challenges that you've already mentioned in your testimony. But how do we provide the necessary incentives so that heavy-duty trucks are also going to have themselves 
a, a smaller carbon footprint. What additional incentives do you think are necessary? Well, I think if you want to get the newer, safer, more environmentally friendly equipment out on the road, you've got to incentivize it. And you've been a leader on this. You sponsored a bill uh, that would repeal the federal excise tax. This is a 100-plus-year-old tax, World War I. It's the only one left of that era uh, that still exists. And it tax on 12% of the price of the sale of a new tractor. So that's roughly $25,000 per tractor. Now think about that. Not only is it, it more expensive, the impact that has on manufacturing that equipment, jobs uh, around the country in those manufacturing facilities is quite significant. So we believe that repealing that uh, would have a measurable impact on getting cleaner, more environmentally safe uh, equipment out on the road quicker. Thank you for that answer. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Cardin. Uh, I'm, I, we're going to uh, move down to Senator Merkel.